Hello, everyone. This is Nikolai from Postgres AI, and this is Postgres TV. Uh, it's not open talks series. It's just interview again. Uh, but the, the the guest the guest today is super interesting. One second. I I need to switch off. Sorry, uh, my, my bad. I, I, I forgot to switch off uh, audio. So guest today is super interesting. Stas Kelvich from Neon Database, Neon Tech, how to, how to name it properly. Hi, Stas. Yeah, hey, uh, Neon Tech, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's how we call ourselves. Company name is Neon Tech, right? Neon .tech. Yeah, ne Neon. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the company name is Neon, and yeah, and we are trying to, trying to register all the our packages were available as Neon, but then it's, it's not. We are called we, we are calling them Neon Database and so on. Right, and you are you are one of three co-founders, right? Yeah, I'm one of the co-founders at Neon. Yeah, and like last 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 decade, I spent mostly developing databases, mostly with Postgres, a, a bit work in of yeah a, a bit of work in Yandex on Yandex database, and then and then yeah like uh, it's already almost almost two years that that we are running running neon yeah and uh, that's a lot of fun there uh, but basically neon is serverless postgres and but, yeah and we can we can expand I, into details uh, yeah 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 so first of not, all not super well defined term but at least hacker news crowd tend to agree that we are serverless enough not super serverless but serverless enough Right. First of all, I must say that uh, definitely Neon is one of the uh, most noticeable Postgres-related companies and projects uh, lately, like like last couple of years. Uh, it's very noticeable. Yes. And the uh, question is, like, I, I know uh, Nikita Shumgunov, your, your co-founder, uh, probably right. uh, like started this, right? And uh, yeah, co-founder uh, and CEO. Yeah. Right. And the question is, uh, how was it started and why Postgres in general? Like, I, I will be asking many why questions, actually. So anyway, okay. how, first question is, uh, how, why how Postgres? Well, I mean, Postgres is a, is a, is, is a best database and that's, that's, uh, that's, <laughs> that's quite, quite, quite obvious to a lot of people. But yeah, in terms of, yeah, in terms of, uh, I would say kind of market analytics. Yeah, Postgres is growing, and all the companies, what, what, like whatever database you sell to that, that companies, you, you, you also will see that there are a lot of Postgres inside, and Postgres is like gains a lot of traction. And I think like again, last decade, probably, probably, probably JSON introduction in Postgres helped a lot, and yeah, uh, adoption of Postgres is growing, and it's it's. It's also a great database, so that's why we decided to focus on Postgres, and uh, yeah, and that's how we how we build our team and started start 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 started the startup. But also, we saw and uh, we saw AWS Aurora, and that seemed to be a right right architecture, separation of storage and compute. It it helps you to run massive massive installations of uh, of Postgres. It doesn't contribute like extremely a lot into uh, user experience itself. So like basically for you, it's Postgres itself. Uh, it is the, same, the same vanilla Postgres, but it also unlocks a lot of really cool features. And that features could be bottomless storage. So so now you can do sharding on on the storage layer. Let's let's yeah. let's, let's stop. And sharding is absolutely okay. inter interesting to me. How mm -hmm. uh, um, how if we split if we uh, have uh, uh, compute and storage uh, separately? How, yeah, yeah. So uh, how, we, I, we, we I, I just this, but... trying to to to, yeah. to finish the sentence. So yeah, uh, so, a lot. So when you're separating them, actually it unlocks a lot of things that you can do like storage wise and only compute wise because now your compute is serverless and then that's basically auto scaling. So you can you can you can you can you can do a lot of. A lot, of, a lot of cool stuff on, on, on both sides of stacks when, when, when you untie right. them. Right, right. So it behaves for developers, it behaves uh, exactly like Postgres, they can uh, migrate yes. easily, easily, but... Yes, uh, that's one, 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 of the, one of the 
things that 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 we did from from day one we decided so like you can you can base your database on postgres and do a lot of cool cool stuff in it and there are a lot of companies actually supporting postgres sql format supporting postgres protocol but they're actually changing a lot and that means that if you will try to migrate to the database you'll have like substantial amount of problems so they are mostly targeting new projects and we decided that like we will try to be as Postgres compatible as as possible. So, so yeah, that's, that's what we target. Mm -hmm. So that you can just take your app if it's running on Postgres, and you can just swap connection string. Import right, data. but if if we make a step back, and uh, mm -hmm. you, original idea was let's create as a member. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. Uh, original, original, the original idea was let's create open source Aurora. Yes. And Aurora. Uh, original aurora uh, right like not uh, the recent versions of aurora it was not uh, serverless it was regular it was like yeah but the idea was when, let's yeah let's when improve behavior of checkpoints and like let's uh prepare like let's make postgres uh, better in terms of handling uh right workloads so uh, those who are currently on oracle can can uh, consider this uh, like this option this uh postgres like system as an alternative to oracle right mm -hmm. and the new one started as uh, the idea let's repeat it but open source and then it seems uh you switched to idea of serverless so yeah. i have really, two, two why's here uh -huh. why aurora yeah. uh, maybe it's maybe because yeah, why, maybe why aurora it. and why why, why we why, why serverless we, she, right. she, well, yeah, Shifted. but mm -hmm. when we started, actually, Aurora Serverless was already a thing. So that, like, when we when we decided uh, that let's do open source Aurora, we we already were looking at a at a at word serverless. It was serverless v one though. They actually did a second itera iteration on that serverless v two that they released to to general availability actually quite recently. I think this summer it was it it, it went into GA. Um, yeah, but so I think that's that probably answers one one of why's. So we, we actually saw that with the, with the separation of storage and compute, you, you you can do serverless, and if you will not do separation of storage and compute, it's actually like really tricky. Uh, what what uh, is serverless? Yeah, yeah. Uh, here by serverless, I actually like, let's let's actually, I mean, it's, I would say market like technical marketing ish term but what what i mean from technical side is actually auto scaling so that you can be responsive to your load and change amount of resources so 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 so, so that like sweet spot is that uh okay you're not using your database you're using some you either scale down to zero and shut down it completely or you scale down to some minimal minimal configuration let's say one core but when you're actually starting start sending queries like let's let, 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 let's uh, grow amount of resources available uh, to that without that interruptions, computer. right? Like so. without interruptions, and that's the main distinction between serverless v1 and v2. So v1, they did it like uh, as far and as yeah. as far as I understand, as outside observer of like what problems are there. So I I I, I don't actually know how they did it, but it seems that they, they did it like a classical, I would say, vertical uh, auto scaling of a HTTP like service. So you have a proxy and that proxy holds connection and then you swap swap compute compute on like pause it. resume in PG Bouncer if we if uh, like vertical. Yeah. I, I I had a model of like vertical pod out of scalar in Kubernetes. So it's kind of similar. But but yeah, I mean you can hold connections, you can just move connections to a new one. And that will work for HTTP, which is like mostly stateless protocol not super again not super stateless but mostly stateless but it definitely like would be dramatic for a lot of progress workloads it, it it will it will be okay for some workloads when you have uh yeah like quick queries simple transactions use, mm -hmm. yeah, single you, query you, transactions yeah you don't you don't use any any session semantics like temporary tables in, you don't yeah, care about cached plans, for example, and so on. The like. statements, yeah. So, like, yeah. and fixing all of that is 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 basically like never ending thing. Uh, yeah, but then then they did serverless v two, and they actually fixed it. So, like, now 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 you now you auto scaling and without without dropping connection. 
And with after scaling, you, you you think about like okay, adding resources and and like going yes. down as well. But can we go down to zero? For example, if it's Saturday and nobody is using, uh, can we like stop paying for compute at least? Is yeah, it possible? Yes, with so new one, it's yeah, possible, so, right? So actually, actually, we did scale to zero first because it's it's kind of uh, that auto scaling. <laughs> between zero and one, it's a bit different problem compared to between between one and some some m. Uh, yeah, so now now we we detect situation when when you basically don't have queries for for five minutes and uh, we we scale to zero. We just shut down compute and then when we will try to connect to it, we we can intercept that connection, parse protocol a bit. We authenticate you, so we implemented that that part of the Postgres protocol in our proxy. And then yeah, if you if you, if your if your credentials are correct, then then we'll spin spin it up, and you will connect to it. Yeah, so that's that what scale to zero is. But then there is also a story how to implement uh, scaling between like reactive to the workloads and how you how you change amount of resources. That's also like uh, yeah, well, I guess this explains story. this uh, idea the like this goal to to be able to scale up and down uh, this explains why separation of uh, compute and storage is needed right so this is yeah, so like it's, one of the reasons it's, it's 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 it is one of them one of the reasons another reason is that you actually can can do uh so if you have a separate storage you you can you can handle uh like high availability stuff in that storage, so you wouldn't need you would not you not necessarily need replicas for high availability purposes. So we we, we implemented our like reliable broadcast protocol, raft based. So so we can send 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 the data to the multiple location. None of them is Postgres. So that's that's actually quite close to what Aurora does or Microsoft. I actually forgot how project called to Microsoft had a similar project. Um, after scaling group or something, no? No, no, no. It's, oh. it's it's similar to AWS Aurora and also separation of storage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody does it. There is a pro like, I mean, there is a LADB in Google. There were several projects in Microsoft, and they also did the, the same separation of storage in compute for SQL Server. Uh, Chinese clouds did the same. Uh, I think there are at least two projects from one from Alibaba and second one i i don't exactly remember but probably by by dance so you see a uh, obvious trend here that this is like yeah many yeah, yeah, many companies yeah, do yeah. this and and you you do this so with postgres yeah. And, and so, so, so yeah like but back, back to the point yeah so with a on the storage level you can you can just bundle in high availability and that would be way easier to manage compared to uh promoting replicas and you can do bottomless storage so like there are there are valid use cases where um, you're not that much compute bounded, but you storage bounded. So let's let's put. For example, we want a uh, hundred terabytes of data to be stored in Postgres. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And and that is kind of like ar 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 archival data. Let's say it's archival data. So you actually like yeah. I mean, you can you can put a big big VM to 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 run queries but you may be not bounded by 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 itself like you, you, yeah you're storing that time series and it could be like 10 10 terabytes or it can be 100 terabytes whatever so how do you achieve this uh, for example we if don't. Have... so yeah like, ah. well, let me be completely honest we, okay. we didn't we didn't implement it uh storage sharding yet so basically our storage you can you can think of it as a distributed file system uh when you when you're reading data so basically it's an interface between compute and storage is get me page when you when you're reading but when you're writing it's totally different that actually you're never writing pages you're writing write ahead log stream to it so our storage can understand postgres format um yeah and and here here yeah that's Basically, you can imagine that there's a big key value store where where value is a Postgres page or like eight, Postgres eight kilobyte pages. So it's more or less straightforward to implement uh, implement the sharding there, basic like range sharding, range partitioning, and yeah, you can you can use multiple, about compute multiple nodes. nodes. Yeah, but then so, then we again about about definitions. Yeah, so like. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, so so basically, so, what, 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 or... so from from Postgres okay. point of view, it's the same table. So you you don't 
you don't expose this uh, concept. I think the closest closest concept would be if you have something like Ceph or any any other like let's say NFS, and you attach it, not NFS but something like Ceph, yeah, and you attach it like hundreds of nodes with 10, 10 terabyte disks, and you just created one big file system uh spanning spanning all that hundred nodes so it would be one one pet yeah it would be one petabyte file system and you just strong pod like and you are mounting this file system to some some node and and now now your postgres have access to that one petabyte file system so that is i think rel like remotely remotely some 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 uh an analogy that uh that yeah what well, this is a way how we intending to do to do sharding on a storage level. But at the same time, these days, AWS has quite big disks. I think the maximum node is 60 terabytes. So we are kind of still postponing mm -hmm. postponing this, this problem into future. None of our clients. But ask, you cannot attach one disk to multiple EC2 instances, right? So you you, you should yes. consider S3 as primary storage uh, for like for data directory, right? Or or for walls as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I, I, again, it was that was that was analogy, uh, not not the I, I want, to attach I, to nodes. Mm -hmm. I wonder how like if we this separation, how how does it work? If we if we consider S3 as our primary storage and we keep only yeah. some data. Um, we still need to have disks for some, like I don't know, like transaction information or something, right? Uh, how, like, is it isn't it slow, for example? Like, yeah, if you to... go directly to S3, it would be slow. Like latency is quite big there. Mm -hmm. So, so what? So the, the the way we run, we have a that compute node, and compute node doesn't hold any any persistent data in it. It has it, it has some 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 kind of like. SLRU files, you probably know what what what, what I'm talking about. But so the I, primary goal of a uh, computer node is uh, to have a lot of memory, buffer pool, of shared CPU, buffers, yeah, and, yeah, and so yeah. on. So it's and, basically it's, basic, ba ba basically usual Postgres, but we intercept all the disk writes and reads, and we intercept right ahead log stream. Otherwise, it's a it's a usual Postgres. Uh, so and yeah, I can I can walk you through the right path. So like. We intercepted that right ahead log. We send it to service that we call safekeepers, and and that and that service in, in, is intended to safely storing right ahead log. So it's 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 cross AZ. So and and we have like several several safekeepers and Postgres and set of safekeepers. They they form a raft group, raft ish group, and then safekeepers will transfer that uh, right ahead log to service that we called uh, page server and page server is actually like main my main storage for the data page server will, will understand that right ahead log it will basically materialize in its own format but it will materialize on its own disk data yeah basically postgres data directory but in in a bit different format but doesn't doesn't matter and then it will redirect it to s3 but it will still hold it locally it will still hold it locally. So all the requests that kind of Postgres, Postgres uses its own shared buffers, but when there is a cache miss, we'll redirect that to the thing that we call page server. And that page server has like locally on disk, it has a locally attached SSDs. If you like, I mean, there is an option of going directly to S3, but that would be just, just slow. Um, so page server is just one thing. Like, I mean, it's one node. Yes, in, and, the, and the, yeah, and the, I mean, probably, probably I can, uh, I can show some some, some slides. If yeah, you, you that, should that, prepare that, slides. Uh, uh, yeah, this. but I, I, I mean, you 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 should you you should you should say that in advance that I should prepare slides. Sorry. I I, I, uh, would. I actually have it. I mean, we can open a blog post that with with all the pictures. But, if uh, you want to open, it, it's okay. Like, let's go. Uh, and if not, mm -hmm. uh, I, I can, can just I can actually send you a link. Let's let's. Okay, I I, I will let's, attach let's the link. I saw some uh, some uh, presentations. I uh, just wanted to like to explain it once again, but probably it's, it's definitely this this kind of thing. It's better to uh, watch uh, to to see as a diagram than just talking sure. about this, it. Here, yeah, here is the link. Mm -hmm. I will attach this link. Okay, or I can uh, maybe even open. You can it right you now. can maybe screen yeah. screen share it. Of course. 
here it is. Yeah, so if you scroll down, yeah, so that's that's mm -hmm. actually what I meant. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so we send data from Postgres to set of safekeepers, and Postgres and set of safekeepers they form a raft group. And intention here is to safely store with low latency, safely store uh, most recent transactions. So we're only answering to the client that transaction is committed when it reaches majority of safekeepers. Okay, then the same but data. Not, so, so it's enough to reach safekeeper, not page server. Yes, so let, latency is correct. still yes. low, right? Uh -huh. Yes, yes, yes. And basically need to send it, synchronize to disk. So it's kind of like Postgres replication, but we also don't don't need to run and redo there. So it's even, yeah, I think we we measured that. We did, we put some amount of work to, to match Postgres replication performance here. And then, then I actually... Uh, did a bit better because we like in the, on the safekeepers we do a bit less work, uh, but anyway, yeah. Then from safekeepers to the page server, and page server actually materializes the data, and so it it will materialize all the basically you can think of it as a Postgres data data directory, but with all with all kind of mix mix of data files and write ahead log in its own format, and then mm -hmm. we'll redirect to to S3, which is here called object storage. Uh, and and here idea of uh, so our criteria of uh, like reliability or dura durability criteria is mm -hmm. that we know that each piece of data is either in that write ahead log service on the safekeepers or in object storage. Several so, several safekeepers. So yes, several safekeepers. Of, so 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 basically, mm -hmm. you you send data from safekeeper to page server. And you don't delete it from Safekeeper. Page server send it to object storage, and then right. when it's when 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 page server knows that it's on S3, we we will report back to Safekeeper that hey, now you can actually truncate this. Uh, yeah. So so there is invariant. So like we know that each each piece of data like attached to some LSM is either on Safekeepers or on S3. Yeah, it, and everything then, is then asynchronous, then we, so everything, everything is yes, asynchronous, yes, yes. so so Here, uh, yeah, latency yeah. Bec so keep our, our Yeah, latency which matters here for the write is latency between compute and safekeepers. Mm -hmm. I have a question here. So, so yeah. this is this separation is, is super interesting, of course. But uh, uh, question is why uh, you focus on scaling like at storage level? What? about uh, scaling rights at compute level so can we like somehow extend this idea and have multiple writers here or it's not possible like absolutely Mal multiple writers so you, you're talking right, about right. Some, something like a sharding on a postgres level or like multiple i'm not sure what postgres i'm level. talking about but this okay. is a question like yeah <laughs> okay i i think i i think i have an answer for that uh so basically if you if you will try to implement any sharding solution on top of the Postgres, or like or implement sharding in Postgres, or you implement multi-master in Postgres, you will change transaction semantics. So, mm -hmm. and I mean, I, I I was working in some company. It, mm -hmm. Basically, I, I mean, I I was working in a Postgres Pro. It's one of the one of the companies that 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 uh, contributes to some extent to the vanilla Postgres as well, but. Kind of my learning about how how Spanner how Spanner works mm -hmm. how how similar databases works we can we can think of Cockroach we can think of TDB and and others but you will change semantics and the semantic and, uh, of transactions and now now people cannot just take their existing app which probably like you you will have apps that were compiled like five years ago and nobody have sources for it you just cannot put it uh, like you cannot swap database and put it there so like talking about bigger picture uh yeah you're changing semantics you if if, if you're implementing some 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 sharding on uh, postgres level you're changing transaction semantics. it's kind of like one stupid example would be that now some of your transactions will abort even if it's a uh, if it will not happen in an ordinary Postgres. So default is isolation level in Postgres is uh, uh, read committed. And mm -hmm. it's not super strict is isolation level, but it has a nice property of 
uh, if you if you don't have a deadlock transaction will commit and, mm -hmm. and that's and like everybody relies on that and now if you with some probability will roll back such transactions then like yeah like some developers are unhappy and it's everybody says it like hey please retry your transaction but it's super tricky like retrying transaction reliably it's super tricky you need to you you actually need to write transactions like kind of you you actually need to uh, get transaction ID for each transaction that you are running, store it somewhere in your app. Then if if there is an error in a connection, you actually don't know whether the transaction was committed in the database or not. So like on the next reconnect, you have to check it before retrying yeah. it. So, there, there, there are, so that while while it sounds sounds pretty simple, hey, retry a transaction, it's not it's not that, 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 that easy yep. in practice. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of long story short. Uh, yeah, uh, our, you definitely th think about it, but it's not easy at all, right? Uh, so. I would put it a bit differently. So, like okay. to my understanding and to the, to to understanding of uh, Heike and Nikita, if if you're implementing if you implement sharding or multi master, you will change uh, semantics. And that so will, for users, and, this will be a really different process. And that and that and that will yeah, and that will. And that will make it harder to migrate to such to such mm -hmm. a database. So that was, I mean, there are at the same time you you also cutting some cutting out some users that interested in in actually, uh, right. yeah, multi multi node compute and they they can write new apps. So they would not be like backward compatibility is not that big a deal for them. Yeah, I mean, so but that's that that was kind of our decision. So we are not focusing on that part of market. We are focusing on a. Yeah. On, on another part of market. This reminds me of those poor users who come to Postgres chats uh, in various places and ask for help. And then at some point, uh, uh, those who, who try to help, they ask uh, which Postgres version are you using? And they say, okay, it's RDS or even Aurora. And re usual reaction is, this is not Postgres, right? Go ask RDS. RDS say we it's Postgres. We use Postgres. Uh, you can ask community help uh, related to Postgres. <laughs> so they are between two windows, you know, like. Uh, All right. Yeah. I actually never, never, never faced it, but yeah. yeah. I I saw it many times, like mm -hmm. a, a lot in many places. Yeah, in Telegram. But RDS is actually quite Postgres-ish, but then Aurora is a less. Pos I mean, it's still Postgres, but a bit. So there are like. What is Neon it? more Postgres than Aurora, or or same, or um, hard, hard to say actually. Um, so, so yeah. Now, if we talk about compatibility, there are a few few things that 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 basically it's like in our control plane, like like user management and things like that. And we actually like kind of we, we just need to write a bunch of code to 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 help. To to allow to allow all the use cases there, but yeah, not sure actually. Like I I don't have a have a have a good understanding, not not a good understanding, but I I do remember some 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 problems that were on Aurora, but they were not on RDS. Yeah, I think like it it would be it would be honest to say that we are closer to Aurora in that case. So like you totally can run into some problems with Neon. And they're solvable, and we will solve them. But you will you would not run with that with that problems in a with with the usual progress. But that's yeah, that's a that's a game. Interesting. Uh, and, and so I think uh, I think we will see that. I hope that we will see that sometimes in chats that like yeah, people people will ask for help, but then it turns out that it's neon. But at the same time, yeah, we, we also have our like community, and we will try. We are trying to help users there, so maybe they will. Come to us yeah. asking us for help. Postgres ecosystem is uh, interest is developing very interestingly. Like many systems, uh, and Neon is one of them, which uh, like can be considered Postgres, but not fully. So it's interesting. Let me return yeah, we, to we, this. We actually hope to to uh, to commit our changes to to the vanilla mm. Postgres. It's like in a small scope. It's not that big set of patches. Uh, so we hope that with time and some amount of to, release, to, release cycles in Postgres, it would be possible to to actually run by to bring Postgres, Postgres to closer to Neon in this case, right? So a little bit, or yeah. But then, like, if you so 
APIs that we are using to intercept that page writes and page reads, for example, it's, I mean, it's, it's there were actually API in that place. And there were two implementations of the API. One was called magnetic disk and one, one was, was called tape. And I think mm -hmm. tape was deleted like summer 2016 ish because nobody was using it for 20 years. Um, and yeah, it's the same API. And if you think of features like table compression, it's, it, it's, I think it's the right way to do it on the same level. Mm. Uh, so that, that set of APIs, it would be useful for, yeah, and no, no, not only for us. So Interesting. I think if, if, if it would be useful only for us, it would be actually hard to commit it on Postgres because the Postgres try to avoid that, that, that features that like vendors, vendors do, 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 do want to have it in it. Yeah, let, let me return uh, to this yeah. picture. And uh, we have a comment and a couple of comments in, in Where chat. Where do you look at the comments in, in YouTube? It's YouTube, yes. Yeah. So the, the comment, last comment is uh, uh, sharding rights would still require some distributed locking, which is extremely hard to scale. I think you like this is just a comment uh, for, for what you explained. And from Alam, we uh, have... Uh, uh, sharding will... Cosmos uh, DB. Um, actually, actually... Actually, you can do sharding without distributed locking. Mm. Um, that's another topic, though. Um, but yeah. if you think like, I, I actually don't, don't this see this question, but uh, uh, if you can, you, you can think of the the way Spanner does it and more like closely like, closer to like Postgres ecosystem, like how Cockroach does it. So you can have MVC in each chart and then you then you can do transaction commit and then in that transaction commit you it's a bunch of in, interactions but basically like spanner that did that I think right the first time and and yeah so it's it's yeah I think it's just just as a note I think it's possible to do distributed blocking mm -hmm. And a suggestion from Alam, Cosmos DB, it was related to when you discussed the separation and so on, like, not, okay. So so let me return to this picture. I have a question about <clears throat> about uh, uh, the the idea that, okay, we it's hard or like, let's, uh, uh, let's skip this idea of having multiple writers, but definitely with this architecture, you can have multiple readers, uh, like, yes. like uh, read-only sure. uh, standby notes or like accepting uh, selects. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is what you do already, of course, right? Actually, you... actually, mm -hmm. actually, it's uh, one of the PRs that we, 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 we do review now. And, uh, mm -hmm. and yeah, so it's, if you, if you use our service, it's not yet available. So it's, but it's on our roadmap and, uh, Cool things but... that, that 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 we we can do here is is actually and is actually going with a with a with a cross region replication and several points of presence. So here, like in in Postgres, in ordinary Postgres, you you have to connect replicas directly to 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 primary. But here we have that Safekeeper service and the protocol between Safekeeper and Page Server is actually like usual Postgres replication. So it's Postgres protocol. So safekeepers kind of pretends mm. to be Postgres. So actually, can attach a lot of a lot of instances to the to this to the safekeeper, and because page server is versioned, you can you can actually you can actually untie replicas a bit more from uh, from primary, so that you wouldn't like you you know that problem when you run analytical query on a replica, it also influences primary, and you can you can kind of. Hot and by feedback. Uh, yeah, you, you can you can actually do, yeah, dilemma. Then, then, yeah, mm -hmm. then, then you can turn it off, but then you will you will sometimes roll back queries on a on a replicas. So here we can we can actually battle. We, we, we can actually solve it so that like Postgres compute not necessarily need to know about replicas, and replicas can ask all the version of pages from page server. And here we come to branching, right? Yeah, because now, now because page server has a lot of yeah, it stores previous versions of replicas. It's actually like there is it like it it stores pages, it stores right ahead logs, and it's not always materializes as the latest version of page. Not necessarily. So it, it just there are a bunch of heuristics. But if you can think of it like you have eight kilobyte page and you have a bunch of changes to it, you can you can decide to do it lazily. So it it would be a bit more effective for you to store just 
few catalog records, which is like 100 bytes for, for like mm-hmm. not, not that wide. And, so, and so, materialize so we, it on demand. Yeah, and we can run actually a new uh, primary node, which is like separate from the original primary and like kind of promote it and this is yeah. branching we can we can yes. Uh, yes yes yeah 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 if you yeah if you yeah that's 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 what we do yeah and that's available on our yeah you, you can you can actually yeah go to our website re- register we have a, right, right. we have a free tier so, you can create branches there so you launched branching a few weeks ago and it's it looks uh, really interesting we will but, launch at beginning december right right a yeah, month but, ago yeah but but question is about like more like uh, simple things. Uh, if I have a, a read, read only uh, like standby node and I want to mm-hmm. re- redirect uh, reads there, uh, will uh, latency be as low as for regular Postgres with streaming repl- replication, which is usually very very low, like asynchronous uh, uh, standby node, asynchronous replica. In this uh, approach, uh, from I think experience, we don't. Uh... Again, we we didn't implement replication yet, so so it's mm-hmm. it's 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 in progress. But I, I think fundamentally it should be the same as in Postgres. So we, like we 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 don't change too much. Uh, and it's, we, you mentioned it's the same the Postgres replication connection basically replication yeah, so, protocol. Mm-hmm. So, but then I mean that's like safekeepers and page servers written in Rust, but they written mainly like originally. Our team, including me and Heike, was was heavily heavily into Postgres. So when you ask Postgres people to write something in Rust, they 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 they, they, they will they will expose they, they will write a uh, some subset subset of Postgres features. So basically, our safekeepers and page servers they pretend to be Postgres, and you can connect with PSQL to it and send some some commands there. I ha- I had a question in my list: Why Rust actually? Why, why, Rust? why Rust? Yeah. Um, so we did want something without uh, without garbage collection. So we we actually like we 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 wanted to we we understood from from the start that would be the cases where we would care about close to metal performance. So that 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 why would we yeah we we kind of went into area of non garbage collect languages but then basically two candidates were were either c++ or 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 rust and uh, we didn't have too much experience with rust but we decided to try but like i would say like accurately try it so if you uh, run into some problems with a compiler or we we wouldn't like it too much uh we would we would go back to something like c++ but uh but yeah, it actually went well. So Rust is uh, is super nice, and it also helps unexpectedly helps with with hiring people. So there are there are a lot of really smart people that are interested in 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 working in using Rust as a primary language, and but not working in a, on a blockchain project. And so they 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 actually quite quite happy to to to, to go to us. This is kind of one one of unexpected nice. Uh, consequences. Heike has a nice, nice action, a nice talk on a Rust meetup, mm. which he did like after I think half a year or maybe a year of his his, his experience with Rust. Like uh, then, kinda, is it on like, YouTube or, or like? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's on YouTube, and I can uh, attach a link. And he 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 describes his his experience or like what 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 i learned after one year in rust and what what works well what works not well uh but yeah so far it's it's i think it's a, a it's a good decision uh, there are some like yeah sometimes you're battling compiler but uh otherwise it's it's really yeah. nice i yeah interesting uh, we we don't have a lot of time left uh so to to move to, to towards uh, finishing point uh you, like Correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, looks, it looks like starting from the idea of making, creating uh, open source of Aurora, uh, you switched to the serverless idea, which gave you three big capabilities, not not, not fully yet, but uh, it's auto-scaling, bottomless, and branching, right? Three, like, properties, right? Yes, that's, that's I think, like, kind of three, three, three biggest, biggest features, yeah. 
Am I right uh, saying that uh, the third, last one uh, branching uh, is considered right now is like maybe the main one in terms of marketing and explaining why Neon, not Postgres, why people should go to Neon? Am I right or no? I think, yeah, I think you are right. Yeah. So that's, uh, so we, we, we brew out of scaling, we're brewing uh, bottomless and, and we, we did branching. And, and the and the schedule will be we release branching. We 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 we're actually still iterating on it mostly like in a now now in DevX and UI space because with branching you can do a lot of stuff like like you know the thing with deploy previews like recently right. became popular and so you can and the, have and the, and the can... question yeah like we you you like we, you you can do integration and actually. Actually, each deploy preview open its own database branch for it of, of main, and now what, you can actually test your migrations there. Why is it better than uh, regular copying database? Like, I mean, uh, deploy preview, you mean, you mean like uh, if we want to provision for each Git branch, we want to provision new environment, uh, like yes. staging? And there are a lot of services. Testing. There are a lot of services like Vercel does it, Netlify does it. You just have your GitHub repo. You click Even Heroku button. does it. Even oh, Heroku, Heroku, but, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they like call it review right. apps. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, so, so why all giants, all barriers? So, mm -hmm. uh, obvious question for me because we also do similar, but mm -hmm. with uh, ZFS, uh, why is it good, and uh, why should I use Neon for this? Like, if if it's considered as major feature. So, is is it about yeah, speed? Yeah, yeah. Is it about money or anything else? Um, I think I actually would we would say it's about. The, the the way the, the way we we actually trying to implement that that's about uh, simplicity of use. So you integrate it with well, let's say Vercel, and that mm -hmm. is that is few clicks. You just need to grant access to your GitHub repository, then then it will just take click care. click click, and it's working, right? Take care. Then then few clicks, and now you mm -hmm. have a now you a few clicks integrate integrating Neo into Vercel, and now you have environment variables. With a with a main database, and for each preview deployment, we will change it for a branch, and that and that is it. I mean, you, you totally can do it yourself with a with ZFS or or even just with a pg dump, pg restore, and and automation in your like. Uh, but it will CI, be CI slow script. and and uh, maybe yeah. a bit more expensive. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, like, you yeah, and you can you can set up a ZFS, or you can you can go to Postgres AI and uh, use use Postgres AI product, and that would be faster. But it will also like yeah, now you, you now you actually have to configure it. Um, so that's, uh, that's we where... also try to achieve uh, simplicity. But but the question uh -huh. is uh, about uh, time. Like I, I I was very early tester of branching uh, mm -hmm. for neon branching, and it was not. Thank you. Like, fast and originally but when you released it it was super fast like a couple of seconds as as uh, promised uh, so i can i can uh, confirm it's it's fast but uh so so definitely faster than dump restore which will take for one terabyte at least one hour or so maybe more if you have a lot of indexes and if you're using physical copy like base backup or something mm -hmm. rsync or something it also will take um, uh, a lot, like may, at least half an hour, maybe. By the way, tomorrow we have with Michael Christophidis, we have a podcast uh, mm -hmm. about copying databases various ways. So we discuss logical, physical, and right. think owning as well. So branching, uh, uh, neon branching as well. So uh, question is about like, speed is perfect. Two seconds to copy like terabyte database. It's impressive. It looks like magic. But we don't copy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's copy and on you right. don't copy because ZFS, it's copy yeah. on right. Physically, ZFS, you don't yeah. do it. Uh, okay. Yes. And you don't pay for storage additionally. Like So you pay for one terabyte of storage if it's one terabyte. You can yeah, that's a super... So that's that was, uh, yeah, that's the, great. The, the, mm -hmm. That was I was talking about branches and that we are kind of iterating on that. Now it's it's really complicated story on what the, what, what the storage is. And yeah. copy on right branches, and what what is the size of branch in in in, in that model? And, and if yeah, you don't, like, if you if you just created branch, didn't uh, uh, write anything, you don't pay extra at all. Storage right, but now, cost now is if, you, if, if you haven't deleted this branch, but your main going forward it holds it's old growing, data. Yeah, but it holds. but we also allow branch of branch and all that that weird stuff. But in yeah. understanding, like yeah, and trying to 
explain to users in a nice way like why why it, what, what should you do if you're like running out of to the, clean up like, how, how how to clean up yeah, this is yeah, question yeah, so we also have this isn't just question and we, okay, okay, we have solved, solved it? it no not okay. yet yeah, it's yeah. the the first question to solve it uh, how to properly display uh like how many bytes each branch like potential yeah, saving yeah. if you, you delete on, it on each, on each and we can calculate that so that's the, we can calculate how much how much uh how, how much yeah space you will reclaim if you delete it but it's still not a full story because if you deleted this branch uh it will also change uh how much you how much space you will reclaim if you delete one of the one of the neighboring branch branches so yeah we we didn't play with nested branching we had only think cloning so it's like only one <laughs> level but uh under your influence and others we we already implemented branching it will be in next version database lab engine 4.0 nice. and we will have the same issues as well like uh, but question is different a uh, tricky question if if you if you allow it so um Okay, I pay for storage much better price uh, rather than if I copy it in a regular way and pay for each copy separately. It's great. But what about compute? If I need multiple uh, branches and for each branch I, I run compute node, mm -hmm. do I need pay to pay for each compute node separately or no? Yes, you need to pay for each compute node separately. But here it's really cool that we the, that scale to zero thing kicks in and yeah i mean like if, if you think about that use case of preview deployment it's it's no. probably not the, the most like your your preview de preview deployment of your app is probably not the most popular website in the world only you only visitors is is developers of that website and right yeah so so right. while, while it's so, spinning yeah you you use you're spending some some amount of compute hours but that so you tested it and then passed to testing to other people and it, they say we will do it next week yeah. and several days without uh, usage uh, and neon will scale down uh, yeah if we, you don't pay for computers that's, that's okay. great now now the constant is five minutes so if there are if there are no uh, yeah, queries for five minutes then then yeah, yeah we shut it down yeah that's that's great uh oh, oh, comment Neon does not depend on Postgres snapshot for recovery, so your branch has to replay essentially no data to go uh, online. I, I don't know about ZFS-based clones. Well, uh, ZFS-based clones are slightly different. You need to create snapshots, and you can create branch from that snapshot. If you want like uh, arbitrary point in time recovery, you need to replay a little bit. So usually we have like uh, hourly snap snapshots or every four hours. And when and then we create in a second we create a clone right. already running from that point. But if you want to replay a little bit, it's already slower. So, but uh, for development, it's it's uh, okay to have. Uh, like yeah, so this, that's, that's from, from kinda, we can we can go back to that page server and how it stores data. So it's you, you, so we we do the same on a page level or maybe it's like bunch of page level. So we. If you, if you're starting, you can ask start asking for for pages right away, whatever version it is, and the algorithm of the page server is that you need to to find a we call it layers. You need to find a proper layer. You need to find previous image, and then re replay a bit of well, but on the page level, so you don't have to re replay all the database. You you you, you right. do it lazily in a runtime. So so you can request any LSN or timestamp, and yes. it will take roughly the same time for any arbitrary point it's actually what we would would take the same so uh so primary works the same way so when primary asks for page we actually don't specifically materialize the latest versions of pages so when when primary works it also may like from time to time goes with that uh redo side redo cycles so let me ask you differently from user perspective mm -hmm. if i request arbitrary timestamp from the past uh Yes. Uh, like branching originally is very fast, like a couple of seconds. But if I request arbitrary point in the worst yeah. case, how long uh, can it be? We have we have actually I can send you another 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 blog post where we do where we do uh, binary search 
on history. Yeah, yeah, I saw it. It's interesting. Yeah, so we, yeah, we so know that we had a problem. Ah, we deleted some uh, data, in, like truncated table or something, yes. and we don't know exactly the, the moment in time, and we try to find it. Yeah, it's, so it's, it's, this, it's the same time to create branch like from the from the latest point and like the, the current state of the database, but you also can go, uh, yeah, like yesterday and create a branch. It's the same several seconds and the, and like all the code paths executed uh, during the during the request that Postgres will send are totally the same as with the ordinary yeah, that's great. Postgres. That's great. It's it's not like in with ZFS, but uh, yeah, that's great. It's interesting. Uh, but with ZFS, we uh, like I, I wanted to comment about price of compute. So I agree. Like that's great to shut it down and don't pay for compute. With ZFS, you always have one node, and but it's fixed. You just one node, and you run mm -hmm. multiple. Uh, so it doesn't grow. And I I, I spent some time thinking about it, comparing right, these approaches, and I think. Like in Neon, it will be lower in terms of costs if, on average, during a month, you you need to run less than one compute uh, branch node. Mm -hmm. But if it's on average more, more than one, just one. In our case, we will be have some additional savings right. because we, but we I think, have fixed I, I think the difference here is that can you can you run two branches simultaneously? Yeah, we we can have on one node we we run a lot of Postgres nodes with small shared buffers, uh -huh. right? And we yeah, can yeah, have yeah. a lot of them. We are limited by memory, basically. Right, so, right, right. So, so you you, you insert, yeah. And, and we have yeah. common common arc to arc uh, one uh, uh, common cache. So it's interesting to continue comparing this, uh, but uh, but uh, yeah, branching is super inter like I I'm. Super excited that uh, like we are not alone thinking that this is future of development and uh, any developer should have a big size database to develop, to test, to optimize SQL and so on. So, so congrats with this launching. Uh, excited to see what how engineering uh, experience will change in future, thanks to Neon yeah, as well. Yeah, so let's, let's, let, let's change it. Let's change it together. Uh, yeah, 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 great. So we need to drop, uh, as I promised, it's already one hour. Uh, we need to drop. Thank you so much, everyone. I have big drop attaching a lot of links now to, to cover all, all we discussed. Uh, please, of those who, uh, thank you, especially those who watched online for your comments, questions. Uh, those who watch recorded, please ask questions uh, in comment section. And don't forget to like and subscribe and please share links with your colleagues and people who might be interested in database in general and Postgres especially. And thank you once again, Stas, for coming. It was super interesting. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for asking to come. Thank you, Nikolai. Hope we will meet again uh, here or somewhere soon and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. talk more. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Have a good day. Have a good day, too.